I always find it kind of interesting. People ask me, people don't ask me, but I go on like, you know, online forums and stuff. People ask this, you know, a question for, for every console you own or have ever owned, what's your favorite, what's your favorite game? And when it comes to the, the Nintendo Entertainment System, I always have kind of a weird answer. Because that console is so well defined by what? You know, when you, when you think of a Nintendo Entertainment System, you think like Zelda, Metroid, Mega Man, Mario's 1, 2, and 3, be, you know, be it Mega Man's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 even, though I don't know how many people are still playing up until that late number. Kind of a weird decision. You know, you had all these classes, you know, Final Fantasy got to start there, Castlevania got to start there. You know, even though I know it didn't really, but, um... You know, <clears throat> Dragon Quest. All those, it's so much history, you know, on the... on the Nintendo Entertainment System, and it's celebrated, and rightfully so, and all those great classics are, are well canonized in the memory of the of the retro gaming and just gaming in general public. So my answer always goes to a game by a little studio out of the UK. You may have heard of them named Rareware. Now Rareware, Rareware, what a fun name. Um, they put out a game, they put out two games really, well three games on the on the NES that was kind of, that were kind of like this. Uh, it was a top, not, a, not so much a top down, but kind of a, a shoulder view, corner view, isometric perspective, um, racing game. And my favorite of the three is, is RC Pro-Am, the original. I know a lot of people are partial to uh, Cobra Triangle. Which is the same sort of idea and plays similarly, but there's more of like a combat aspect to it. And I think that game's perfectly good. And the sequel, RC Pro M2, is it's fine. It's just not as I think consistent as the uh, as the first one is, just in terms of design and and play style. So I always I don't know. I don't always tell people that because it's not something that I get asked a lot. But in situations where you do get asked that, that's the question, that's the answer I give, and it's, it's, I know not the most common. And that's because I'm special and unique, and everybody should support me for that, but, um, I don't know, I guess my point is, the, the thing about that game, though, is that it is, the, what's really beautiful about it is, is its simplicity. It is purely a racing game. It is one of the best controlled racing games I've ever played, even into this this modern era, you know, like where controls can get so specific, so tight, so realistic. It's there's just nothing like the feeling though of RC Pro Am. And really no other racing games on the Nintendo Entertainment System, I feel like got that right. You play other racing games on that. Outside of that that unlicensed micro machine game. Micro Machines, you know, Codemasters. Really can't think of that many like actual racing games I like on the on the NES outside of Pro Am and its sequel Pro Am 2. And the thing for me though that's been really interesting is outside of its sort of pseudo sequel remake, um, Championship Pro Am on the on the Master, or not Master, just in the Mega Drive Genesis. Um, you don't really see um, RC Pro Am like kind of proselytized that much. You don't hear sermons on the hill, you know, talking about it. People just, when you talk about NES games, that's just not the game that comes up. If I tell you, give me an afternoon. Tell me you have to play one Nintendo Entertainment System game for a full afternoon. And my attention span is going to be kept by RC Pro and probably better than any game outside of maybe Tecmo Super Bowl or like the original uh, Ice Hockey. Those are both sports games, you know, so they kind of run out of, out of stuff there after a while. So anyway, I've been looking for a game, I've been basically chasing that high since I stopped really playing NES games, you know, I don't really have access to a Nintendo Entertainment System anymore. And um, I've been looking for a game that's kind of captured that same sort of essence, and for a very long time it seemed like I never would find it. And, um, well, it turns out, actually, 
on the Nintendo Switch eShop, very recently there came a game that uh, pretty well, like, captures what RC Pro-Am had going well. I would call it kind of, not a spiritual successor, but a a game that, that pays, I don't know if it necessarily even pays homage to it, it's just it feels right, you know? I, I don't know if RC Pro-Am ever, if that name ever crossed the lips of the developers of this game. But it feels perfect. Like, it feels like it's the sun, maybe the long-lost sun, of RC Pro-Am. And that's what we're covering today on Switch Stance. When I think back on RC Pro-Am, I remember three things. The first is the audio, both the very evocative sound effects of the main game and the Game Over theme more specifically, which I consider to be the most inexplicable song in the NES library. A seven second track created by future Donkey Kong Country composer David Wise. It's only seven seconds, yes, but somehow it captures the emotion evoked when an hours long run in RC Pro-Am comes to a close. Once all your success is spent uh, and you run out of the leeway that keeps you in the game even when you're not putting together a perfect performance. You get so intensely involved in the game and when it comes to an end you don't really expect it. It always feels like you've reached game over at least one or two tracks before you're ready. The theme mirrors this. It starts out simple, almost easing you back out of the RC Pro-Am mindset and growing in complexity, adding a second instrument, or whatever matches that description in the context of the NES sound chip, at about one second end, and then a third instrument and a percussive track at the third second, building up to what sounds like it could become a melancholic but intense theme that's going to really draw you in. <laughs> And then it ends, far quicker than you ever could have expected, mirroring the experience of playing the game itself. Uh, the second and things are that it ramps up to an unbearable difficulty after a certain point and that it controls weirdly. Super Pixel Racers gets at both of these things, and it's an interesting experience regardless. And, oh, sorry, there was a fourth thing. There's also the old diagonal isometric perspective that defines RC Pro-Am as well, but that one's obvious enough that I don't feel like I'm going to need to expound upon it. I said that RC Pro-Am controls weirdly, because it does, at least by the standards of the day. You go back and you play your Rad Racers, Mock Riders, Ferrari Grand Prix Challenges, Danny Sullivan's Indie Heats, your other racing games of the day, and you're holding down which of the NES's two buttons when you want to accelerate. That's right, A. Presumably, that's why they named it that, A for Accelerate. That's my theory, at the very least. The other one, B, was generally relegated to shooting a gun or breaking or something else I'm not sure I haven't played them in a while all I remember was that in RC Pro-Am the B button made you accelerate which was really weird for the games of the time and Super Pixel Racers goes one step further why put the accelerator on an abnormal button when you can just take it off of the controller entirely what this means is that you're really always accelerating, which really changes the way that you understand racing. You can't maintain a specific speed, so there's never really a sense of comfort in any turns you might make, or even like in going down a straightaway. You're always on edge because you might need to change course and you might be going too fast to handle any upcoming turn effectively. It leaves you on the razor's edge for basically the entire game, which is invigorating. The feeling of actually succeeding in the face of everything working against you is good. But that brings us to the third thing from RC Pro-Am, the unbelievable difficulty spike that hits when you least expect it. In RC Pro-Am, that was represented by the orange car deciding to wild out, leaving everybody in the dust and offering no hope for the competition. This could come at any time. In fact, let me use a clip from classic YouTuber have a turkey to illustrate and see nothing and then suddenly this happened and I just realized I have no chance of winning this race before I complete the first corner of the first lap of the entire race I'm already done I mean look where the orange car already is I'm leading the other two cars I've still got two corners and a huge straightaway to go through and he's already at the end of the first lap after a certain point in Super Pixel Racers, you will find a similar difficulty spike, only it's in the form of a wall, which actually manifests itself in the form of a track. 
A Class Track 2 Rallycross Malaysia. The track itself is more complex than nearly any others encountered before. You hit this series of turns where you need more dexterity than is really given to your car on this second course of its section uh, because you haven't had the opportunity to improve your car and the handling's not good to begin with and most of the track is dirt, so adding in the whole no acceleration button thing really just makes everything tougher. It's a gauntlet. I enough to the point that it kind of unfortunately overshadows what is otherwise a really pretty excellent indie racing game. Just wall after wall after wall, both in the grander metaphorical sense and in the more specific sense, because there are so many walls that you slide right into in this stage. Too many walls. Too many walls. Too many walls have been built in between us. Too many dreams have been shattered around us. But if I seem to give up, they'll still never win. Deep in my heart, I know that strength is within. And I don't know if that means I'll, I'll keep playing Super Pixel Racers or not. Mm -hmm.